Hello and welcome to this month's painting vlog, which is going to be a little different. Previously I've said that the goal of these vlogs is to document me painting, hopefully just stuff for my armies, but also one model every month that's going to push my boundaries and make me a better painter. And as I said in the last vlog, that was meant to be, this month, the Tyranid Demacheron, or failing that, the Tyranid Hive Tyrant, which I have. Two big models that will teach me how to use the airbrush properly. Unfortunately, however, the components necessary to paint both of those models were shipping from Green Stuff World in Spain, and I ordered those two months ago and they still haven't arrived. I have had a lovely interaction with them and they have shipped it again, hopefully it's actually going to come in like the next couple of days, but that's meant that I haven't been able to paint either of those big gribblies to like a high quality this month. But you know what has a certain quality all on its own? Quantity. This was the month that I finally finished off all of the Hawaiian Orc boys, the basic infantry for my Hawaiian Orc army. As you can see, this lot are all of the Age of Sigmar bases, so the Oryx, with a few 40k components. And I kind of went to town on these guys as like a, a final farewell to doing all of the boys with some unusual melee and ranged weapons. Every model here has a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. Some of those melee weapons include shovels, a bodyboard, and a paddle and some of the ranged weapons include a beach ball, a wet towel and some squirty sun cream. There are two models here that actually aren't quite finished. The sun cream is going to need some UV resin uh, with a white ink in it to make it look like it's actually a squirt coming out from the bottle and you'll notice that one of the models is holding nothing. That's going to be a swordfish which uh, I painted separately and I hadn't glued on by the time that I filmed this, sorry. These guys were a ton of fun to paint and a suitable end, I think, to the Hawaiian Orc boys, who, now that there are two squads of 30, well, okay, there is actually one base that's empty, as you might see here. That's because there's one boy who's going to have a umbrella that's like a thrown weapon. So I'm waiting for the brass rod from Green Stuff World to come so I can do that. But with these guys complete, that's actually the back of this army broken. You'll notice at the back, there's the surfers, which are gonna run as bikers, which I'm gonna be painting next once the UV resin arrives. And also, a load of grots, the last real infantry unit that I need to finish off. There's a couple of looters and a couple of knobs that I need to do, but the grots are going to be extensively converted as well. I assembled them on stream last week and I'm really excited to get around to finishing off the modelling and painting them and making them really goofy. This month was also a month of Space Marines, so my partner Pixel Girl was interested in playing a game of Kill Team and so I worked up a list of Space Marines for Kill Team including a Blade Guard veteran and at that point I actually hadn't painted any of them, so in a day I just rapidly put together a paint job for a Blade Guard vet, making use of the airbrush, which I'd never used before on a Space Marine. Doing so honestly saved at least an hour's worth of work per model. Instead of having to worry about multiple coats, it was just a case of doing a few thin coats with the airbrush and then some edge highlighting and recess shading. So much simpler, so much faster. In fact, I was so taken with this process that I then finished the rest of the unit of Blade Guard Vets. You'll notice that I haven't done the pauldrons on these models and that's because I forgot to. But as well as the armor, the other thing which I'm actually much happier with that I'd used the airbrush for was their swords. There's a kind of high contrast sheen to either side of the blades, which was super easy to achieve by varying where the highlight was applied with the airbrush and using a post-it note to blank out and mask one half of the blade. Super simple, super quick, and it's so effective. Not content to stop there, I also painted up some of the most overpowered units in 40k, Eradicators, and these guys I was more careful to do a gradient with their armour. Seeing as I knew I was going to be painting the armour pretty plainly without too much trim, I wanted there to be a kind of dark to light gradient from the bottom of the model to the top, and I think it worked really well. I'm really happy with how these models came out. Again, with the airbrush it was possible to do these in record time, with just taking the time afterwards to make sure that the edge highlighting was correct on the pool and on the weapons and I am going to go through and add some browning and sort of heat haze to the end of the muzzles. I also, I didn't take footage of it, but I also did the armor coating for the remaining five assault intercessors so I anticipate I'll be getting them done in the next week. All in all, a lot of Space Marines painted this month, as well as the Orcs, and these Indomitus models were just so great. It made me so glad that I took the plunge and bought this box. These are really fun models to paint. Hope that you enjoyed this log. Next month, hopefully I'll be talking about either those grots or the bikers, as well as, fingers crossed, at least one big Tyranid Nasty. By the way, I'm gonna be releasing a couple of different videos over this month, hopefully, on this channel, some of which are gonna be non-Warhammer related and they're gonna be a bit weird. Brace for impact. Anyway, 
I'll see you with more painting in a month. Thanks for watching.